Hello everyone, this is Shannon from That's So Poe, and today I'm doing week four of my 2022 reads. This week I read two SFF books and one cozy mystery, and I enjoyed all of them. Timestamps and content warnings are in the description box below. First, I finished Light from Uncommon Stars by Rika Aoki. This is a 2021 release that is sort of science fantasy contemporary. So it is set in Southern California and it follows three women. Uh, one who is a woman who's made a Faustian deal with a demon to turn in some souls to hell. Another who is a runaway teenage trans girl who escaped her house with basically uh, an emergency bag and her violin. And the third is a woman who is actually an alien and she is a refugee from kind of a galactic war escaping with her family and settling on earth um, to live kind of a peaceful life running a donut shop uh, and their lives intersect and they kind of have to figure out who they are and what they want to do and what their values are in life and it's just such a beautiful story it is incredibly heartwarming it's also painful at times they go through some difficult things um and it is just beautifully written just absolutely loved the writing it was so evocative and so descriptive but also really really funny uh, this kind of reminds me is if, if maybe like a beautiful literary fiction met hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy it's a little bit of a weird description but it's also a little bit of a weird book so you have to be okay with kind of a little surreal uh, world building and humor but I thought it was so wonderful and it just moved me so much I really loved this I gave it five out of five stars and if you're interested definitely check out the review that I'm gonna post later this week next I read a classic sci-fi the left hand of darkness by Ursula K Le Guin I buddy read this with Christina at bookworm dreams who I will link below and I think it was so great to buddy read this book because there was a lot to discuss this is a very interesting kind of philosophical exploration um, Le Guin I think has this really great way of doing almost an anthropological study in some of her sci-fi. So this is a world that is not spacefaring, but um, kind of an envoy from the galactic group comes and is trying to tell them that, hey, there are other, you know, planets and things like that, and you can join our group, um, but they don't necessarily believe him. And so he's there to learn about their cultures and also to try to convince them to open up trade with the rest of the universe. Um, this world, though, is a very strange one because it is basically winter the all of the time it's very 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 cold they're in an ice age um, and there's some genetic differences so they are humans but they don't have genders instead they're always just kind of somewhere in the middle very non-binary um, and then kind of they go into a period of fertility once a month where they become male or female um, but it's really it trades off sometimes they're male sometimes they're female uh, and they also have very different kind of cultural values. There's different groups on this planet. Some of them are a little bit kind of anarchic in the way that they approach things. And some of them are very um, bureaucratic in the way they approach things. And so this envoy is getting to know these different groups of people and trying to convince them um, to make contact with this galactic group. Uh, it, it does not go always so smoothly, but it's fascinating the kind of world building that Le Guin does, the way that she kind of takes a premise and follows that to its logical conclusion and says, okay, if these people live in this world that is basically in an ice age, how does that affect the way that they interact? How does that affect the way that they trade, their values, all of these things? And so I love the way that she explores that. There's a lot of philosophical discussions in this um, and also some really beautiful nature writing, kind of this uh, very austere being out on the ice, that kind of writing. So really cool there. But the story itself is at times a little bit slow. I don't know if I necessarily always felt as engaged with the characters as I wanted to. And also it's a little bit of a heavier book than I was expecting it to be kind of sad at times. Um, so yeah, it wasn't like a fun, exciting ride, but it was a really deep and meaningful ride, if that makes sense. So I thought this was great. Definitely want to read more books in the Hainish cycle. I gave this four out of five stars. And lastly, I read The Weed That Strings the Hangman's Bag by Alan Bradley. This is the second book in the Flavia de Luce series, and my husband Sush read this out loud to me. Uh, this is definitely such a sweet 
cozy mystery series. The main character, Flavia, is this 10 or 11 year old girl in the 1950s in England in a small town. And it's just everything that you expect of like a cozy murder mystery, but with this excellent, very precocious, very obnoxious little girl who sticks her nose into everybody else's business. And she's so smart and really into chemistry and just filled with all sorts of facts that help her solve mysteries. Um, so the storyline in this one is that um, a puppeteer and his assistant come to town and some things go down and there is a dead body um, and they have to investigate and figure out what happened and lots of uh, histories and things that are maybe have been covered up for a very long time come to light. Flavia in this is excellent as always, just very precocious. I love the setting. It is just also a really cool um, mystery as well. Although I feel like in the first book, I liked the way that the mystery unfolded a little bit better than in this one. Um, also, I find that both in the first book and now in the second one, I've had a couple of issues with some of the ways that people are depicted. In this book in particular, there's just a bit of ableism that I struggled with, as well as some sexism. So I really enjoy the story, but that kind of um, it was a little bit of a fly in the ointment, you know what I mean? Where it just slightly detracted from the story. Even so, it's just such a great cozy mystery series. I gave this book four out of five stars and I definitely plan to continue. Okay, so those are the books that I read this week. If you guys have read any of these, if you wanna read them, if you have any thoughts, anything at all, just leave me a comment down below.